The general perspective is, uh, again, the stereotype, is uh, that, uh, okay, let's spend some money for the people who will be excluded by, by, the, by the progress. So yeah. let's take care of, let's, let's spend some money for the poor people. Yeah. But in order to spend some money for the poor people, we must make money. Right. And it's the market, it's the free market which mm -hmm. makes the money. Mm -hmm. If you take too many resources out of this free market which produce the money, we will also not have the money right. to give to the poor people. This is the general perspective. Yes. <coughs> when I found that, um, that the state, that, it, that uh, in the Human uh, Development Report, yeah. and, uh, and that's what I'm interested in also, this kind of cultural context in which you are also that to and have to explain better the part of it, but things are look differently. I think that looks, we are, we, the, the, say, the social indicators, the human indicators, they are not seeing something as the money being given to, to the poor people, but they are something like is seen as social resources, so human resources that feed into the growth of mm -hmm. all the sectors. Right. It's not something, money taken out from the, uh, from the let's say, from the, from the virtuous economy and given to those which are out of it. Right. It's actually is money invested in human and social environmental resources, <coughs> which then feed it back, <coughs> feed back right. into the condition that make development possible. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, yeah I Am think I that's right. Uh, now, how <coughs> this thing seems to me a bit clear academically, but I find it extremely difficult to bring it to, to the general perception of the public. How to go about it? How, how, can, I, how can I try to... to not, not only to convey the message, which I agree is strong, yeah. that we need to look at the poor, but that if we, the more we look at yeah. social justice, the more we look at good social environment, the more we create resources for the good economic development. Yeah. Yeah. It's important to be clear about the ends and the means. Growth is a means. It's not an end in itself, although, although there's sometimes a tendency to start treating it as an end in itself. And people and their human development is the end even though there's a tendency, as you said, sometimes to treat human resources as, an, as a means rather than as an end. Now, it's true that human resources can also be a means, and I think that we have learned a lot of useful things in development economics about the importance of human resources for growth, and not just for growth, for development generally, and in particular about the role of education, you know, whether you talk of growth or whether you talk of uh, improvement of health or of uh, public participation in democracy. For all these things, education is very important. So these Human resources have an important instrumental role, but I think what is more important than that is to think of them as ends of development uh, and to think them of them as well-being of people and also as rights of people. And you know, in India we have a fairly clear uh, roadmap uh, in the form of the constitution, which is very pro progressive in many respects and clarifies uh, without any doubt that uh, every citizen has basic rights to education, to health, even to employment, to living with dignity. And we have to, I think, keep in view these are as the ends of development. That is not to deny that growth can be important. And you have pointed out that growth generates resources that can be used, uh, in particular, through well-functioning functioning public services to improve people's health and education and nutrition and so on. So growth uh, is, is, or at least can be important, but it is a means. And the ultimate objective is people's well-being and people's rights, as spelled out in this case, I would say, to a large extent, uh, in the Constitution. Um, I would also say that, you know, growth, um, as I, I mean, as I said, it, it is an important means, but um, it can, it of course, can also be quite problematic, in particular the environmental consequences, I think, have to be looked at, and in India this is now a very big issue, because the past uh, 10, 20 years have been extremely destructive in terms of environmental consequences, very rapid growth of inequality and creation of lifestyles for a minority of the population, which I think are becoming increasingly difficult to replicate for everyone else without further pressure uh, on the environment and uh, other public resources. So, you know, there are a lot of questions uh, that have to be addressed uh, without denying that growth can be an important instrument for transforming the lives of people. So I think these priorities have to be clear. And there is a very serious confusion at this time about the growth being an important thing in itself. And you know, I think that if you look, if you ask why is the Indian elite so obsessed with growth, 
why is it that, you know, as you say, it's, it's become a kind of overriding objective in itself, and there's a tendency to view anything that stands in the way of growth as an, you know, an irritation that has to be done away with in something or the other, whether it's the environment or whether it's equity or anything. No, I think this obsession with growth, it's not so much this belief in the trickle down, you know, what you have described, the idea that people will follow. Uh, it's not so much the trickle down theory, it's partly the trickle down theory, but I think it's also a lust for power in the world and for becoming a big power on the world stage. And I think that's where growth becomes very important in the mindset of the Indian elite. And rightly so, I mean, if you really aspire to becoming a so-called superpower on the world stage, then obviously you would have to become a much more, much richer country and that would take a lot of economic growth.